On NBA Draft Night 2020, the near unanimous opinion was that the pool of talent did not feature any superstar level players, meaning the pressure was low for the Minnesota Timberwolves who held the first pick, and eventually took a 6'5 shooting guard out of Georgia named Anthony Edwards. Edwards had been a highly sought after player for a while, but he wasn't a prospect whose scouts were confident was worthy of being a number one draft pick in most years. His game was very unpolished, he said things that made people wonder if he even cared about basketball and in a league trending towards do-it-all big wings, Edwards was a bit on the shorter end and all of those concerns together made it hard to imagine him as a future superstar in the NBA. But boy have those concerns gone away over recent years. Edwards has improved his production in every single way since his career started and has begun to look like the future NBA superstar scouts doubted was on the table on the night he was drafted. Edwards has been so good in fact that some people are starting to compare him to the greatest to ever do it Michael Jordan. Now the two may look alike and play alike, but if Anthony Edwards is ever going to get even close to reaching MJ's level of dominance, there's going to be a lot of barriers for him to overcome. But let's start with why he might actually have a chance. Anthony Edwards has taken every opportunity he's been given to establish himself as a leader in Minnesota. Sure, off the court he can be playful, but on the court he's an absolute demon. As a rookie in the 2021 NBA season, Edwards came out guns blown Blazing, even though Carl Anthony Towns was at the height of his career, with officials around the league viewing him as the most valuable player in the league to have on your roster, Anthony came in and already took control of the team at any chance he could. The Wolves had him come off the bench for the first 17 games, but that didn't bother Edwards. In only 25 minutes, he took over 13 field goals a night and made just 35% of them. He wasn't getting his shots to fall, but that didn't get in the way of his alpha dog mentality, because despite the poor play, he continued to shoot as much as he could. As when eventually Minnesota started him, he began taking almost 18 shots per game, which was even more than the franchise cornerstone Carl Anthony Towns was taking. In fact, since the year 2000, only three rookies have taken more shots per game than Edwards did as a rookie, those being LeBron in 04, KD in 08, and Donovan Mitchell in 2018. And it's not like Ant-Man was an efficient player, he missed a whole lot of shots and was somewhat of a black hole to his team's offense, but they were incredible signs of future superstardom in Edwards, and none more glaring than his dominant presence on the court. Edwards couldn't but believed he could do whatever he wanted with the basketball, and he's shown us over the years that he's getting to the point where that's almost possible. And most importantly, Anthony Edwards has shown that he's a leader, a true franchise cornerstone, and throughout that process, he's exposed his teammate Carl Anthony Towns for being the direct opposite. Unlike Cat, who's undeniably just as gifted and probably more talented than Edwards, at least for now, Anthony he has the kind of mentality and confidence that could actually take his career where he wants. There are plenty of examples here, but the postseason is probably the best we got, and in only his second and third years as a pro, Anthony's numbers have risen significantly in the biggest moments, whereas his teammates have dipped every single go around, showing us that when it comes down to it, mentality is more important than talent. And this fact isn't just seen across a series of games, it's also seen in individual moments where a player has an opportunity to show us that he can make things happen when nobody else can. Edwards has failed to do so multiple times throughout his career, most notably in last year's playoffs, where Ant had a chance to extend Minnesota's first round series against the eventual champion Denver Nuggets. Edwards didn't make that shot, but the fact that Minnesota went to him as just a 21-year-old instead of Cat says a whole lot about who they think the true leader of the team really is, and they're definitely not wrong. Ant has proven to be able to step up and knock down big-time shots, and that includes in the playoffs as well. Back from McLaughlin, the bounce to the outside, the jumper, goal! Defends on a switch, crossover, three, he Anthony Edwards has tallied quite a few clutch time shots in his young career, and although he's made some mistakes in the past, for such a young player that's expected, and the fact that he's even demanding those shots at the end of games is impressive alone at his age, and continues to show us what kind of a leader he can be. On another occasion, a 20 year old Anthony Edwards got into a scuffle with Jimmy Butler, who ripped the ball out of his hands after a foul call. Butler's got a reputation for not being the kind of player you want to mess with, but Ant responded perfectly. 
Miller finds Hero deep in the corner, but shot clock to rest. And then challenging the shot, 42 seconds left. Oh, it's taken back by Edwards. Edwards ended the game with 33 points, 14 rebounds, and 6 dimes, plus the W, while Jimmy left with only 16. It's these kinds of moments that tell NBA fans that Edwards is not afraid of anybody and no matter what will rise to the occasion. We saw this as well in the 2023 FIBA World Cup. Team USA brought together one of its least talented groups in a very long time, but there was still plenty of star talent on the team. However, nobody stood out from the rest more than Anthony Edwards, and it was this run specifically that really made basketball fans turn their heads and say this guy is going to take over the NBA someday, that day may be very soon. As Team USA head coach Steve Kerr said, he's unquestionably the guy. Edwards would go on to prove Kerr right throughout the run because throughout eight games he'd completely dominate whatever team came in his way. In a game versus Lithuania, he dropped 35 points which tied Carmelo Anthony for the second most amount of points scored by a Team USA player in World Cup history. And as far as averages go, Anthony's 18.9 points per game throughout the World Cup is the second highest of any Team USA player in any international tournament since 1984. Now Team USA came in fourth place which wasn't where they hoped to finish, but this team was undeniably one of the weaker groups in recent memory, and with the rest of the world catching up to the US, nowadays it takes more than one superstar from America to bring home gold. But they did have one, and that run of superstardom in FIBA was a massive indicator of what was to come in Ant-Man's professional career. We had seen the improvement by the year in Edwards since he was drafted, as he went from an inefficient 19 point per game scoring rookie to a very efficient 25 a night in year 3, and while it is early, Edwards has taken yet another leap in year number four with career highs all across the board. This very well could be the year that Edwards establishes himself as an NBA superstar. Not only is he producing numbers, but the Timberwolves have begun the year with a record of 6-2, good enough for a top three seed in the West. But again, it's early and we're dealing with a very small sample size of games. But if he continues to play at this rate, Anthony Edwards will very much be on track to becoming one of the greatest players to ever play the game. Forget the efficiency, if by the end of the season Edwards is still averaging at least 27 points, 6 rebounds, and 5 assists, he will join a club of only 5 players that have ever done so by age 22. Himself, Oscar Robertson, Luka Doncic, LeBron James, and Michael Jordan. This is a genuine possibility for Ant based on how he's looked so far, but seeing as he's only played in 8 games, it might be unrealistic to expect that to continue, even though those numbers aren't that much different from his age 21 numbers. So let's look at those. In NBA history, only 5 players players have averaged at least 24 points, 5 rebounds, and 4 assists at age 21 or younger. Those are Anthony Edwards, Luka, T-Mac, LeBron, and Jordan. So it probably doesn't need to be said that at an unbelievably young age, Edwards is doing things that we rarely see, things that basically guarantee future NBA superstardom. But that's easier said than done. Currently the Timberwolves are playing championship level basketball with the number one defense in the NBA and one of the best scorers in the league running the show offensively, but it's hard to say how sustainable all of that really is. Carl Anthony Towns is scoring the least points on the lowest shooting of his entire career, Rudy Gobert is already 31 and doesn't do much to open the court for Edwards with his lack of spacing, the team doesn't have a lot of depth, so a minor injury to a key player like what happened last season to Cat could be the end of it all. And to make matters worse, the Timberwolves only had 4 first round picks from now until 2030, which is why Bleacher Report this summer ranked Minnesota's draft assets as 29th of all teams in the NBA. This is of course due to the trade that landed Minnesota Rudy Gobert that included 5 first round picks, one of those being second year big man Walker Kessler, who alone already has more value than Gobert and he's a decade younger. So the situation in Minnesota could be a whole lot better, but ultimately if you have a top 5 player on your team, doesn't really matter. Issue is, is Anthony Edwards really a lock to make it there? He's played like
quickest so far this season, and he's holding his own as far as the numbers go compared to former greats, but at only 6 foot 5 or 6 foot 4, typically guards need to either be elite shooters or elite playmakers to become a top player at that size. Edwards has a big question mark in both of those areas, but for now though, it's safe to say that Anthony Edwards has exceeded all expectations. He's improved drastically every year since his rookie season, he's got the mentality of a superstar. So are all of those green flags in terms of Edwards becoming one of the faces of the league, or should we temper our thoughts? Thank you all for watching, hope you all enjoyed, and I'll catch you all in the next one.